What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the final round lead card coverage for the 30th annual Tahoe Pro-Am presented by MVP Disc Sports. We're here at Bijou Community Park in South Lake Tahoe. We got commentary coming from your boy Spanky Edwards and my man, Dan Double N Turner. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Excited to watch some good golf here. Heck yeah. Sorry about the hiatus, by the way. Sometimes life just takes you out of the booth, but we're back. Got that hot, hot heat coming for you. Yeah, okay. Leading the way here, we got Peter Keen, 22 under par, 974, playing out of Auburn. Got Brian Peterson, playing out of Sparks, 979 rated at 20 down. Quinn Berkovitz, out of Reno, 20 under as well. And Tristan Cook, also at 20 under. And Dustin Evanger coming up from Diamond Springs, 969 rated, 19 down. Okay. There's our leaderboard. Let's just jump right into it here. Hole one, 333. This is a B position. Uh, it's kind of back by that gazebo you see on the right. Most popular line is the right hand forehand. Yeah, put a little flex on it. Let it get all the way down that, that hallway. Looks pretty clean, maybe a little short. Brian's another guy at Reno that throws left hand backhand and right hand backhand. I don't know what they're what the what the water's like in Reno, but <laughs> these guys can do it all. Okay, yeah, taking the wide line. Nothing wrong with that. Nice line. big hyzer, keeping it simple. Again, just a little, just a touch of Anheuser, just to get all the way down the hallway, and then something really stable to finish back over to the gazebo. All so far, so far, all pretty nice shots. Yeah, these guys all making it look pretty easy. I think everybody's putting. Yeah, pretty excited to see where they are actually ended up. Dustin throwing the hyzer. It's a tight line, but that's my preferred line as well. Looks like he got cut up about halfway down. Yeah, good approach. Easy par. Yeah, it looks like everybody's right here in the circle. Nice drives, boys. Oh, nice. These guys are playing on a Sunday morning, uh, round three. There was 54 holes played the day before. Yeah, a little break today, just the one round. Mm -hmm. Bring the A game. Looks like these guys mostly have. <laughs> yeah, and conditions on Sunday were definitely the best of the two days, so I expect uh, I expect to see some hot shooting. I'm, I'm fired up. Yeah, hard not to get excited watching some good golf. <laughs> I agree. Especially just watching them play, you know, this is the home course. So watching the way they play it and just absolutely light it up. Yeah. Make me a little jealous. Yeah, I play this course four times a week. How do these, <laughs> how do these guys come from out of town and bang? <laughs> Dustin cleaning up the lone par, and we'll slide into hole number two. Pretty good. Pretty good stats there. Four birdies, one par on hole one. It's a sleeper hole. Mm -hmm. We got hole two, uh, par three, 272. This is perfect example of what you're trying to do. Just a big overstable hyzer, kind of over the dog parks, swinging way right. There is OB right behind it, being the road, but kind of the classic saying one or a three. Very attackable. If you do go out of bounds, you're only about three feet from the basket, so it's Almost a guaranteed par if you do go. So far, it's just like hole one. These these four guys making it look easy. Did Sketchy going to throw a backhand, a little putter, a rock shot. Did Peter catch a tree or did he get clean around it? Kind of looked like he had kicked. Oh, did he? Okay. We'll see. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like to play only the second hole of the round, and it's just so easy to go out of bounds if you airball that putt. So I think I respect the, the layup by Dustin. Oh, that goes out of Peter. Bounds. It's so close. Sometimes it's like tricky because you like you don't want to like go super hard, but like you want to make your normal putt, right? So it's like because if you if you deviate for me, like if I try to like do something gimmicky or like just like maybe a soft bid is like when I am gonna airball it. When if I would have just ripped it at the basket, like I probably maybe would have just hit metal anyways. Yeah, but you, but you, the ob <laughs> looming, I it just bleh. your best putt is definitely the one you practice all the time. So right. But yeah, like I said, that OB just creeps right in behind. Then anyway, we're moving into hole three, another par three, uh, 228. These guys, yeah, just a righty backhand, probably. Uh, is this the A or the B position? Sorry. This is in the A position. Yeah, so probably just some sort of overstable mid. You can throw like a soft overstable fairway, but most likely a mid or a putter. Definitely. And try to hit it about. 20 to 30 feet right and just skipping the mulch right over to yeah it. it's a little bit downhill when you go once you go around the corner you can take it really inside for the ace run but if you do hit basically at the base of it you're going to get a big skip and you could easily be 30 to 45 away from yeah it there's like the a like a little ledge you can fall down i kind of like this by sketchy a little bit higher kind of controls the speed better mm -hmm. less chance to blow by it but he still should be right down there putting All right, and Peter rounding out the group here on hole three. See if he can bounce back from the bogey. Uh, Brian, Quinn, and Tristan all caught him. We got a four-way tie at the top right now. Should be quite an exciting battle. A little low. Yeah, always a lot more exciting when there's not just one run away and then everyone's buying for second or third, you know? Yeah, it's only exciting for that oh, guy. No. <laughs> Dustin, that was so close. Moving off the band. That's a nice, nice stroke there from Tristan. Yeah, he's got a real clean putt. Looks very smooth and competent. This one always stings to not get the bird. <laughs> Yeah, especially as a righty backhander, you're like, this, this is it. Definitely a hole you want to get here, especially early in the round. All right, hole four, par three, deep down to the right. Just gonna need this to turn a little bit more. He's going to be probably 100 feet out. This one has just always been so hard for, to, like, get the distance right and get through the trees correctly. It's so far away. I th yeah, I don't see a lot of guys get too close on this one. I understand these guys bomb, but still, yeah. it's, it's a big throw. Yeah, Peter got that one a little bit nose up. He was trying to... You get it to flip and go. I think I think last round we saw a couple guys with the pure hyzer on the right maybe getting close. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how the wind was. This looks pretty proper for Quinn if he can get through. Did that split those two? No, that's shot left. Oh. He's 180 feet out. Okay. Sketchy with the hyzer play. I feel like that's a really normal landing zone there. Oh, wow. Yeah, final round here, we only saw one birdie in the MPO division. There you go. That Just makes sense. Just to show you, yeah, out of 25 guys. Yeah, I feel like this is usually what this hole looks like when we're playing it. It's just everyone kind of laying up, giving it a bid, but giving it a bid from 80 to 150, you know.
nice car. Dustin just keeping it clean with pars. Probably looking to throw a birdie in there. But uh, there's more to be had. Nice jump, Tristan. All right, guys, hole five. Uh, this is actually the par four. It's just shy of 500 feet. It plays all the way to the road, um, all the way through the trees here up to the road. Uh, OB is going to be right behind the basket, but it shouldn't really be an issue for these guys. They're going to hopefully get so far up the fairway that it's just a nice, easy chip shot up to the basket. Um, but you'll see as we get closer that that basket's very, very close to the road that is out of bounds. Right. But being a par four, you know, it, even just being able to get to the top of the hill, which is not that difficult of a shot, uh, it really makes the three pretty easy to do as long as your touch on the second shot is controlled. Oh, that tree is robber. That's a little turned over. That's kind of shooting towards hole three's basket, but he should be okay over there. Yeah, for final round, this hole averaged a 3.3. Yeah. So. so it was our most birdied hole in the MPO division. Any twos on it? I don't think so. Just a whole lot of threes. Yeah. And no bogeys. None. Wow. Well, it's like if you throw your second shot like out of bounds past the basket, you know, you're pretty close to, to tap in the four. Sure. So. Yeah, that's impressive. Based on these stats, you got to punt pretty hard to, to bogey. Yeah, he's going to be a little upset about leaving it that short. Circle's edge for Brian. Uh-oh. Must have stayed in. <laughs> there was no the bogeys. Must have. Spoiler. Sketchy's trying to keep that streak alive. Another par for <laughs> him. Another par. Oh, that's a bummer. There you go. Keep it consistent. Yeah, Peter bounced back pretty, pretty swiftly after that bogey. Only the the one par on the, probably the most difficult par to get on the front. So, or the diff most difficult birdie to get on the front. So. Right. Maybe just keep it alive. A two-way tie at the top with Peter and Tristan. Brian and Quinn just trailing by one. And Sketchy's got to get the ground going here if he wants to be stay in the mix here down the stretch. That's right. Hole six in the A position, 284. This is a pretty common play here. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways to attack it. Like you said, I think most popular is going to be just an overstable forehand straight out towards the bench and let it drift. The... The righty backhand turnover with like a putter or a mid is really, really popular as well. This is one of the one of the more like unusually windy holes. It's almost always like a head left to right, so that's often dictating what people do with their shot. But obviously, like you said today, was they didn't really have to worry about that. The conditions were really nice, sunshine and no wind. You can see that flag just laying down. Right. So it's yeah, dealer's choice today. Yeah, this hole averaged uh, 2.4, uh, about 60% birdie and 40% par. Another hole that was not bogeyed. This one is a lot more understandable mm -hmm. with no with no real OB to be spoken of, unless you really shank the drive. Oh, here go, Peter. Sneak it in. Nice putt. Tristan just hanging that one a little bit high. Probably the biggest downfall of the low to high putt 
as the accidental high or low release, you know. Definitely. Peter is able to recapture his lead here. Now he's got one stroke on uh, Brian, Quinn, and Tristan. Sketchy is on the board. <laughs> For the birdie. Yeah, I, he's love, I love the fist pump. Yeah, absolutely. Sketchy's good people, man. That's great. You know, it's, it's, it's a long round, but when you're just watching the card just rip away, it's hard. And you just, every birdie counts at this point. Yeah. Hole seven, the eight position, about 215. Uh, some guys throw this left side uh, forehand. You can also just throw a putter straight at it. And there's a couple different little hyzer windows. It's kind of choose your own adventure. See Brian going a little bit wider, but just as effective as the rest. There is OB long. But uh, a lot of guys are throwing pretty slow speed disc on this hole. So. Yeah, I'd say the OB left is what really comes into play rather mm -hmm. than the OB long. You, you really got to juice one. Maybe this is the B position. But they're both right there. Yeah. I think we stated last round too, as you can see in the background, this is the busiest green. So if you're one to be distracted, then this, this green will be the one to get you. But uh, these guys in the pro division all on lead card, I don't think they'll have too much trouble with anything. You know, they can block out the noise. Hey, back to back. Go Sketchy, Dustin. he might birdie the rest of them. Yes. <laughs> Peter, keeping it going. He likes that lead. Tristan with the bag on birdie, always a bonus, as everyone knows. Just the one par from Quinn, everybody else birdie, huh? Mm -hmm. This is a birdie fest on this front nine. Hole number eight, 249 in the B position. Uh, you can go straight at it here, or this hyzer line is popular. I like this side. Some guys will throw a righty forehand out to the left and back. Uh, that kind of brings the out of bounds a little bit more into play, though, if you ask me. Yeah. I only throw that that forehand for the uh, the A position. It's oh, it's still so safe. short. It's yeah. so short. But, yeah, once you even push it back another, whatever it is, 30 feet for the B position, um, yeah, that any any tree kick is, like, for sure out mm -hmm. of bounds. Tristan making us look like fools. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? The trees? <laughs> Out of bounds? How about, I'm, I'm, look, I'm aiming at the basket. A little bullseyes. Here we go. Quinn up the middle. Smooth shot slides right in. Nice play, Quinn. I guess we saw all the looks there. And if this is the furthest one out, you know, then you could see you know, all the lines are as good as any. Oh. Probably my, my favorite disc punch ever. That one? Just nice and slow. Tristan pitches it up and in. Quinn does the same. And getting good at tapping in those pars. Peter, a little slip up there, bud. They caught you. Yeah. Justin and Brian now all tied up. He definitely wishes he had that putt back. All mm -hmm. right. This is our final hole of the front nine. 429. Um, this one's tough to get to. You want to go, just want to beat get straight deep and then get a little... Action to the left. Yeah, I take it back. This is probably the hardest birdie to get on the front nine. 
Yeah. You definitely just, yeah, pushing something. Oh, that looks yanked. But he got clean, wow. so he's like pin high. He's. I mean, yeah, that's putting. I mean, putting straight out of bounds, but putting nonetheless. Yeah. Peter, a little bit squirrely, but no trees is good. This hole gets a lot tougher if you hit early. I guess that goes for any hole. I feel like a, like a subconscious mistake to make is going right because uh, hyzering out early, it's like 70% chance you're going out of bounds, so. Yeah, that's the real no-no is, is just, you know, you want to fade the OB. Oh, as we talk about it. Yeah. Sketchy from about 70. Maybe a little bit closer. Well, that looks like a tight gap. Oh, yeah, he was pin high. Mm -hmm. Just about 50 feet right. Yeah, hole nine only had two birdies on it. I guess it was one birdie easier than <laughs> hole four. Yeah, but hole four didn't have, you know, the, the the doesn't have as much scoring separation because of the out of bounds. So there's there's some ugly scores on hole number nine. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. A handful of double bogeys or worse, oh, and some bogeys as well. Yeah. Yikes. Well, that's gonna wrap it up here for the uh, front nine of the final round. Tune back in here for the middle nine. Uh, we got a. Pretty close battle. Two guys tied at 26 under, two guys tied at 25 under. Vanger is hanging around just four back a second. Uh, yeah, should be some good golf coming. This is this is gonna be a battle down the stretch. Yeah, I think we're gonna see a few less birdies going to the back. Like I always say, the, you know, the front is birdie or die and the back is scorable, but I'm very excited to see. It gets a little more heavily wooded back here and the views are unbelievable, so. Can't wait to see you guys on the on the middle nine. We'll be there.